Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Nicole and I'm a holistic health practitioner, nutritional consultant, and herbalist. This video is going to be about a subject nobody really likes to talk about, but I think we should be talking about it. Over 250,000 women get diagnosed with breast cancer every year, and about 90% of these women are over the age of 45. Most people think that if it's in your family, then you're doomed to getting it too, and this is not true. Only about 10% of breast cancers are genetic, and if you take super good care of yourself and you know, eat healthy and exercise and follow the tips that I'm going to give you in this video, you can lower your risk quite a bit. No one is immune to cancer no matter what they do, but there are so many studies showing that lifestyle factors play a huge role in cancer prevention. If only 10% of breast cancers are genetic, then something else is going on. There are factors that you cannot control. And environmental pollution is one of them. You know, you, you can take steps to lower it in your life, but there's nothing you can do about the fact that there's lots of cars and trucks on the road every second of the day, and there are factories and coal burning plants and nuclear power plants, and you know, there's nothing you can do about that, but you can protect yourself from pollution by eating certain foods and herbs. Um, and I'm gonna get into that a little bit later on in the video. Um, other factors you can control are things like when you started your period, you know, your diet as a child, maybe some drugs that your mother took when she was pregnant with you. Many women unfortunately feel helpless when it comes to her risk of breast cancer. And while there are you know, a lot of factors that you can't control, there are many things we can do to lower our risk. So here are 20 things that you can control that increases your risk for breast cancer. The first one is BPA. Now BPA is used to make polycarbonate plastic. It's a shatter resistant clear material that's used in products like plastic bottles, eyeglasses, sports safety equipment, um, and it's also found in baby bottles, sippy cups, teethers, water bottles, food storage containers, and the lining of many food and beverage cans. And I would suggest to never ever heat food in plastic, like in a microwave. Always use glass or ceramic or don't use a microwave at all. The second one would be phthalates. And these make plastic soft and flexible and they're often found in car interiors, shower curtains, deodorant, cosmetics, toys, teethers, rubber ducks, bath books, baby shampoo, soap, lotion. Um, if you see the word fragrance on a product, it contains harmful phthalates that may contribute to a higher risk of cancer. Basically, just stay away from plastic. It's bad for you, it's bad for the environment. Um, and parabens are another ingredient that has a chemical structure that's similar to estrogen, which means they can mimic the effects of that hormone on the body. And parabens are actually preservatives that prevent bacteria from growing in products like shampoo, moisturizers, sunscreen, makeup, and even food. So words to look for on products would be um, butyl parab paraben, ethyl paraben, propyl paraben, and the like. The third one would be chlorine. Now, chlorine is obviously found in pools, but it's also found in drinking water and, of course, bleach, paper products, tampons, clothing, and the water you shower in. And this is linked to an increase of breast cancer. Now, number four is pesticides, and these are definitely linked to breast cancer and all cancers. And it's imperative that we eat organically grown food. I also wouldn't spray my garden with pesticides, nor would I use them in my home at all. There are many ways to control natural pests without using harmful pesticides. Number five would be CT scans, PET scans, and x-rays. I'm going to talk more extensively about mammograms in a follow-up video, so stay tuned for that. But any x-ray exposes you to radiation. CT scans and PET scans are much more damaging than mammograms. Uh, mammograms expose you to about 30 to 70 millirems per slide, uh, and they usually do four slides, so that's about 280 millirems, while a CT scan can expose you to over 1,000. Now, sometimes you may need one during your life, you know, lifetime, but please either find an alternative, like maybe an ultrasound or an MRI, or only, if you ha only have one if you're absolutely positively needed. Radiation damage is cumulative. The more you get, the higher your risk of cancer. Number six would be family history. 
Now, you can't control who you're related to, but remember, only 10 to 15 percent of cancers are hereditary. That means how you live your life is much more important than your family history. Number seven is being overweight. Now, being overweight or obese definitely increases your risk for cancer. Toxins are stored in fat cells, so the more fat you have, the more toxins that you have in your body. So lose weight if you need to. Number eight would be alcohol. Now, drinking just one alcoholic drink per day can increase your risk for breast cancer by 40%. And this is because alcohol is a liver toxin and it affects your ability to metabolize estrogen. Anything that drives up your estrogen increases your risk for breast cancer. Number nine would be low vitamin D levels. Make sure you're getting enough vitamin D. This is a huge epidemic in this country. Get your levels tested on a regular basis and if you're deficient, take vitamin D3, not D2, because this is not very well absorbed. I would start with about 1,000 to 2,000 international units per day. But make sure you get your levels tested first, and then about three to six months later. If you're still low, I would take more until your levels are at least 40 to 60 nanograms per milliliter. I just got mine tested. I get it tested every year, and mine was about 57 nanograms per milliliter, which is perfect. Number 10 would be sleeping with a light on. When you sleep, your room should be pitch black. You should not even be able to see your hand in front of your face. This helps produce melatonin, which helps lower your risk for breast cancer. A study was done, and nurses who were the night shift had a higher risk for breast cancer because they were exposed to all that late night light. So if you have a clock radio next to your bed or any sort of um, night light, or any light coming into your room, cover it up. It shouldn't even be close to your head, definitely, because this causes, um, this affects your brain, actually, negatively. Number 11 would be um, eating hydrogenated fats or heated vegetable oils. This increases your risk for probably all cancers. Hydrogenated oils and heated vegetable oils are terrible for your health. Scientists found that heating up vegetable oils led to the release of high concentrations of chemicals called aldehydes, which are linked to cancer, heart disease, and even dementia. Safe oils to heat for cooking would be coconut oil or ghee. Oils like olive oil, flax oil, and other plant oils can be eaten but should never be heated. I would use them in salad dressing or in cold meals. Number 12 is smoking. Now, I didn't think I really had to mention this, but you know, because it should be obvious by now, but smoking radically increases your risk for breast cancer and pretty much all other cancers too. Number 13 would be too much white flour or white sugar. This should also be obvious, but I'm still gonna mention it. Too much refined sugar and white flour in the diet drives up insulin, which is a hormone that makes cancer cells grow and increases inflammation. Number 14 is cured meat, too much meat, or non-organic meat. Cured or processed meat, especially non-organic corn-fed meat, increases the risk for breast cancers and all other cancers as well. Hormones, antibiotics, and other toxins from cows, chickens, and pigs are very unhealthy. Even organic meat contains hormones that are already in the animal naturally. If you eat meat, choose grass-fed, organic, and only eat it rarely, not every day. And especially don't eat charred meats. This is very important, that burnt part is very carcinogenic. So if you do decide to eat meat, please cook it at lower temperatures. Number 15 would be acrylamide. This toxin is form when, formed when high carbohydrate foods are heated at very high temperatures. This includes foods like potatoes, corn, grains, and things like that. The, in other words, deep fried foods or foods that have been browned, have those little brown parts on them, that is acrylamide. This is very important as a risk factor for cancer of all kinds. If you eat foods like potatoes, try not to bake them, try to steam them instead. And I avoid corn and grains for the most part anyway. Um, and occasionally I'll have you know quinoa or rice, but I try to steam these foods as well. Number 16 would be dairy products. Dairy products, even when organic, contain a lot of hormones, just like meat. Cows naturally have hormones coursing through their bodies even when they aren't fed extra hormones. The protein in cow's milk is not easily digested by humans. Now, there are mixed results when studies are done on dairy and breast cancer risk, but I personally stay away from dairy products. 
If you don't want to give them up completely, at least, you know, eat grass-fed organic dairy and cut it down. Don't eat it every day. Number 17, please keep your cell phones away from your breasts and your body and your head. I don't care how little evidence there is, there's more and more evidence coming out every year. Cell phones are actually still pretty new. They haven't been around for decades and decades, so, um, you know, to me it's just common sense. Cell phones emit radiation, Elect EMFs is what they're called, electromagnetic radiation. Now, why would you put up a cell phone right against your breast? Some women actually store them, like, right next, right in their bra, which is just bad, bad news. So please keep your phones away from your breasts. Number 18 is oral contraceptives, or the pill. Now, many studies have linked the pill to breast cancer. However, the younger you took it, the higher the risk. If you took it in your 30s and now you're 45 and you quit like 10 years ago, your risk isn't really any higher than if you never took them all at all. But personally, I would find another form of birth control. I mean, you know, why risk it? But if you took them as a teenager, this actually does increase your risk quite a bit. Number 19 is hormonal replacement therapy, or HRT. Now this one should be obvious since there are so many studies linking HRT to breast cancer, and I think it's pretty well known now. There are so many natural alternatives to taking HRT, such as herbs like black cohosh, red clover, dong quai, ginseng, and then getting enough vitamins and minerals, eating cruciferous vegetables to help get the liver getting rid of those extra estrogens, I mean, there's plenty more, so do some research if you're suffering with menopausal symptoms. Number 20, having no children or having them later in life. And then also not breastfeeding. Now I know that having children is a very personal decision. Some of you may not want kids, but just know that pregnancy and breastfeeding lowers your risk of cancer quite a bit. And the more kids you have and the more breastfeeding that you do lowers your risk even more. Now, next I'm going to give you a list of things that may increase your risk of breast cancer. They're not really studied that well, um, but I'm going to give them to you anyway, just in case. The first one is wearing a bra for more, t more than 12 hours a day, especially underwire bras. Now, this doesn't cause cancer, but it does hinder the flow of lymph through the body, which cuts circulation and also slows down the removal of toxins throughout the body. Now, I know you can't go to work bra-free, of course, but when you're at home, take it off or at least get a nice breathable cotton bra with no underwire and that it's not too tight. I tend to not wear a bra really at all in the wintertime unless, you know, I'm going to be somewhere where I have to take my coat off. But if I'm going to the grocery store, I usually don't wear a bra because I've got my coat on the whole time. And then I don't ever sleep in your bra. There's absolutely no reason to sleep in a bra. The whole thing about you know, how your bras will sag, if your breasts will sag if you don't wear a bra. That's actually a myth, um, so get that bra off. The next one is hair dye. Now, there is evidence that certain hair dyes, especially darker colors, are linked to an increased risk for cancer. According to the International Journal of Epidemiology, beauticians have a higher risk of cancer than the general population because they're constantly being exposed to fumes from hair dye and other toxins in hair care products. I would try henna or, you know, a more natural product, and they sell these in health food stores. Now the next one is low self-worth or trauma. Now there's no studies that I can find on this, but I believe that having low self-worth or going through an extremely traumatic experience can increase your risk for breast cancer. There's not necessarily studies on this, but there's anecdotal situations where many women after, you know, losing a loved one, like a child especially, or, a, or her husband, tragically, um, and then, you know, within the next year or two, she got breast cancer. And, of course, like I said, there's no studies on this, but I have heard it. So, definitely, if you fall in this category, you know, try seeking therapy. The next one would be antiperspirants. Now, I believe that um, chemicals from antiperspirants increase the risk of breast cancer, and there's no studies, really, to, you know, prove this but they have found chemicals from antiperspirants in actual tumors from women, from their breasts. Now, just because there's no studies done doesn't mean these don't contribute to an increased risk of cancer. You know, back in the 30s and 40s, you know, there were no studies that showed smoking caused cancer, but now we know that it does. So, 
you know, that doesn't mean we should smoke just because there's, you know, if this was the 40s, it doesn't mean, oh, let's smoke just because there's no studies. And you, know, you have to use common sense. So I don't wear antiperspirant. It clogs the, the pores in your underarms. And, you know, like I said, they, they have found these chemicals in the tumors themselves. So I make my own deodorant and you don't necessarily need antiperspirant anyway, as long as whatever you're using works. So now I'm just gonna give you some extra tips that I haven't really gone over yet because the first 20 were things that increase your risk for, for cancer. And I'm just gonna give you some extra little tips that can maybe lower your risk of cancer. The first one would be getting enough iodine. Uh, it's not a good idea to take this in supplement form. It's best to get it from foods like seaweed, things like kelp, dulse, wakami, nori, those types of seaweeds are highest in iodine. Women who are deficient in iodine tend to have higher rates of breast cancer. It doesn't mean that it causes it, but there is a correlation there. Of course, I talked about water earlier and chlorine. It's important to filter your water, get an RO filter, reverse osmosis, or a charcoal filter, or a distiller, and I know these are expensive, but there's lots of toxins in water. Uh, it's best to filter your water that you shower in as well and the water that you drink from things like arsenic, lead, chlorine, you know, all those toxins that are in water. I drink herbal infusions and these are really a delicious way of lowering your risk for breast cancer, especially things like burdock root, red clover blossoms, nettle infusions are great, violet leaf, raspberry leaf, these are all wonderful herbs that promote breast health. The next would be, I talked about earlier, pollution from cars and trucks and nuclear power plants and waste dumps and coal burning plants, you know, that we can't do anything about. You can protect yourself with certain foods and herbs. And I'm gonna go over those really quickly. The first one is spirulina. There's sodium alginate found in seaweeds, glutathione, CoQ10, alpha lipoic acid, Make sure to eat foods high in selenium and zinc, medicinal mushrooms, beta-glucan, which is found in mushrooms and also oats, astaxanthin, fermented foods like sauerkraut, kombucha, uh, beets, chlorophyll, foods containing enough beta-carotene, which is a precursor to vitamin A, lentils, cilantro is especially good for removing heavy metals from the body and also parsley. There's a lot more but for the sake of time, I'm just gonna go over those few. The next tip would be to massage your breasts and get to know them. I use infused oils, such as calendula oil or red clover blossom oil to massage the breasts. Get to know them, make sure you feel that there's any, if there's any abnormalities. In the shower, it's a good idea to um, use, you know, soapy water so that you can get a good feel of, of the texture and if there's anything that feels strange. So massaging breasts is a wonderful way of connecting to your body and getting to know it so that you can make sure that there's nothing else going on. And the last one would just be to exercise. I talked about overweight and obesity being a contributor to breast cancer. It's important to exercise every day or at least five to six times a week. And the type of exercise that I would choose would be something that you love. You're not going to exercise if you hate it. So try a bunch of different things. Pilates, you can jogging, walking, aerobics, you know, yoga. I found that ballet is actually my favorite way to exercise. It makes me very strong and I really enjoy it. So just make sure you find something that you enjoy. Now I want to talk about symptoms of breast cancer that maybe you're not familiar with. You know, most people think, well, if you find a lump, you know, that's that's the only that's the only symptom that would occur if you have breast cancer, but there's a lot a, a lot of other symptoms that can occur with the breasts that can indicate some type of abnormality. And the first one is any type of puckering, a rash, sores that don't heal, any redness or swelling. This orange peel texture, it looks like, it looks like the skin of an orange where there's like a lot of little, little indentations. Nipple discharge, pain, an enlarged lymph node, retraction of the nipple, or any sort of itchiness. If you have any of these symptoms, please see your doctor right away. Okay, so I wanna thank you so much for taking your time to watch this video. I know this is not the type of subject that a lot of people like to think about or talk about, but it's important that we discuss it with 
all of the women in our lives. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, disagreements, please leave them in the comment section and I'll be sure to answer any questions that you have. Thank you so much again for watching and have a blessed day.